Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Skymaster F-18 Super Hornet. This episode is all about the rudders, AKA vertical stabs, and uh, it's gonna be a good one. So stay tuned and we will get into setting up the rudders on this aircraft. All right, so obviously we've got two rudders to deal with here. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup on the rudders on this aircraft. It's actually a really nice setup. Um, I have encountered some issues on some of the previous ones that I've put together. So basically you've got this rod, which I believe is titanium. It could be stainless, but I think it's titanium. And the rod, itself goes or rests in the little pocket here in the rudder. The servo spins this and that in turn spins or moves your surface. So it's a pretty simple setup. I'll throw a picture up now of the previous uh, servo setup that I did. Now on the last F-18 I built uh, basically, the pocket that this uh, rod fit into was a little bit loose. So all I did was take one wrap of fiberglass fabric tape, put it around there, and it solved the problem. Uh, I guess you could make a pocket in there. My worry was that making a pocket, sticking the rudder on, may go around the surface. So, uh, and then of course your surface is stuck on. So that's why I decided not to do it that way on the last one. So we'll see how this one works out. Uh, hopefully it works out good, but uh, if we get the rudders accomplished in a decent amount of time, we'll start moving forward with the hot section, mounting the tail cones, tail pipes, things like that. But this episode is all focused on those surfaces. All right, so unfortunately with the Super Hornet, Hornet model, there is no air brake at the back. So access is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, last one we did, we had this whole area to work in so we could, uh, with the big air brake coming up, so we could put our arm in there and get all that stuff done. So uh, a little bit crappy on this model, but uh, fortunately we've got pictures of the way things are going to be done. So essentially uh, this is the position of, well, I'll just throw pictures up here and it'll uh, make things a lot easier. So I'm just gonna copy what has been done previously. All right, so step number one for this is to get the servo arms centered on the servos. So that's done. We've got the movement figured out. So this is the correct direction for both of the, those servos with the way we're gonna set it up. So that's done. So from my previous pictures, I know that we want the arms a little bit further in on the servo side. So we're using the outboard holes on the surface control horns and the ones that I've marked with Sharpie are a little bit further in. So we're almost matching the previous aircraft's setup perfectly. So that's kind of what we're shooting for there. Uh, we'll be using, like I said, a clevis on this side, a ball joint on that side mounted on the underside of the arm. So next thing I'll do is get our ball joints mounted on the underside. I'm also gonna test fit one of these servos and make sure it actually fits. All right, so a couple notes here. Um, the Stock arms are too long, so I've lined that edge up there and I've cut uh, that much off. You're splitting the difference. Of course, you're cutting some off this side, some off that side. Now, just a point of interest here, these arms that Skymaster are including are now stainless steel. Before, they used to be like really crappy tin um, I'll just say tin because it reminds me of tin foil. Uh, but all of the, ooh, that didn't work out so well. All of the arms now 
including the big ones, are all stainless steel. So that's really nice to see. Really happy with that. So anyways, uh, going off my previous picture, basically I have the Sullivan Golden Clevises just a little bit past the servo. So maybe kind of in this area, there's a bit of trial and error involved here. So what I'll do is I get this all set up, uh, get the arm actually installed. And then what we can do is take this on and off or install it in the plane, uh, take it out fairly easy. And that allows us to adjust the angles and everything on here uh, as we go. And then what we'll do once we get this in the right spot is we'll take the servo and arms and everything off, install this piece with Loctite, Loctite the, the set screw there and uh, that is how we deal with this. But uh, so the first thing I'm doing here is just cutting this down. Some people have asked where I get these little pieces from, these little uh, lock nuts. Those are included with the Skymaster kits. I actually don't use them on the Golden Clevis. I, once I get this set up, I'll put CA or Loctite in there and that uh, takes care of everything and makes sure it doesn't move and takes up any slack in the linkages. So that is uh, continuing setting this up. Now in the last video with the horizontal stab setup, some people have suggested, some of you guys suggested that maybe it was 55 millimeters from the center of the pivot point to the where the output shaft's supposed to be. But you can see the output shaft at 55 is actually longer than the servo horn right now. So I think I probably looked at that before, I just didn't think about it. But uh, yeah, so the 55 is not correct either because even right there, that hole is uh, is too long. So anyways, just uh, wanted to point that out because I said I would follow up on that item. Okay, so if you happen to be building one of these, the stock rod for the rudders are 50 millimeters long. We are cutting ours down to 40 millimeters. So we're cutting one centimeter or 10 millimeters off of the length. All right, so we're a little bit of, like I've already talked about, a little bit of trial and error on this uh, on this setup, but uh, we're getting close. So what I'm doing here is uh, just got the rod threaded into the ball joint. So I've threaded that in, uh, not all the way, but a fair bit. And uh, then I've put the Sullivan Clevis on there. Now the stock, hi Artemis. Now the stock, uh, linkages here, the hole is too small to fit the golden clevis through, so we've got to drill that out. Uh, the dimension on the golden clevis pin is 1.54 millimeters. Uh, I think an eighth inch drill bit is uh, 1.51, so uh, that's really, really close. And so I'm going to drill those holes out, uh, get this mounted, and then we will be able to test fit this. All right, so one thing I like to avoid with the Sullivan Golden Clevises or any clevis like this is taking it on and off and on and off. What happens is uh, I've had pins break before uh, because you're maybe putting a little bit of sideways force on them or you bend these tabs or the actual clevis piece so it's not, uh, not its original shape. So what I do in this case is install one of them in the actual clevis and then the other one I just leave it open and use the pin to check my length on everything so I'm going to install the servo hold it in place install this on the shaft for the rudder assembly and just feel that and get it lined up but what this allows us to do is when it's in the aircraft and I'm showing you guys this out of the aircraft because this aircraft is so stinking tight. So what it allows us to do is if I need more length, I just pop it off, undo this a couple turns, undo this one a couple turns and adjust it as we need to. So I'm gonna get this installed temporarily, adjusted and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so first important tip with this aircraft, if you're working on it, uh, on these rudders, work on the thing upside down. It's a real bear if you're trying to hold that uh, this way in the aircraft and your servo keeps falling out. It's just a pain. So what we're doing is we're just getting stuff kind of pre-fit on the aircraft. So 
One of the downsides is this particular surface. So we've got our rod inserted in there and there's lots of play. Um, so I think we're gonna have to do some work on that one. And on the right surface here, when we take the, uh, the shaft, put it in there, this one's actually nice and tight. So I didn't, uh, didn't check the other one before I put it on, but uh, so this one looks like we're good, but that doesn't stop us from getting things set up. So that's what we are looking at there. Uh, one of the things I changed was the actual rod going on the actuating rod. So the silver piece in the whole setup, I actually flipped that around and I can't remember if I ended up doing that on the last one or not, but anyways, it makes for straighter, uh, straighter arms on the setup. So I think that's a better way to do it, but we're kind of just getting all the lengths and everything adjusted right now. Servo is plugged in to the power box unit. So the servo centered right now and, uh, Obviously with the play in the surface, it's really hard to tell, but um, that gets us in the wheelhouse of where we need to be. So what I'll do now is I'll pull the setup out and uh, that will just let us get things kind of tightened up, dialed in, and we'll also be able to check this, uh, this surface. All right guys, so we have finalized the setup of the linkages. So that's what it looks like there. Okay, so um, I did just Loctite the main bolt on the servo. And uh, next thing I'll show you guys is what I do to deal with the Sullivan Golden Clevises here. So uh, you can put Loctite on there. In this case, we um, Loctite's not great because we're not, we don't have good access to this, so I prefer to use CA. And the big key with the Sullivan Golden Clevises, I have done testing on this. If you haven't seen my testing video, I did failure tests on this. Uh, the little retaining clip is not really that important. Uh, we will put them on in this case, but uh, basically you wanna make sure that you either have the lock nut installed or you do what I'm gonna show you uh, to take up the slack on the threads because there's a little bit of play in the threads of these. And if you don't do this, uh, it'll show up in your linkages. So all I do is put some thin CA on there. It wicks into the threads and then just take a little bit of kicker. And that's it. So that takes care of all of the play, prevents it from unthreading. You still can unthread this, uh, just takes quite a bit of force. And then we'll do the other side as well. So I just put some on the threads, put some on the little uh, spot there where the clevis joins together. A little bit of kicker. And she's good. So what I'll do in this case is the other side may match up perfectly. It may be a little bit different, but at least this gives me my starting point. So I'm gonna make the, this is the left rudder as it's marked there. I'm gonna make the right rudder up. I'm gonna put the little clips on there and we'll, uh, we'll get the other one made up and see how it matches. All right guys, so we have matching rudder servos. So this one was a little bit different within a couple millimeters. So don't just make these up blindly and uh, just assume that they're good. Um, you have to make them up individually for each uh, rudder because of course, little tolerances show up in your linkages and everything. So those are both good to go. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we are gonna get this installed. So basically what we're doing here to get these installed, and again, I'm showing you outside the plane because this stuff is really, it's, it's really tight in the plane. So for example, the right or in your screen, the left one, uh, we're going to install the servo in place. Now what happens is that shaft gets inserted uh, through the airframe into here. So what we can do is get the servo installed, screw the servo down using the JR servo screws. So we'll get that fastened in place. Then we'll put a bunch of Loctite on the actual assembly here, insert the rod, and then put Loctite on the pinch bolt or the set screw. Now, one thing you wanna make sure 
when you put this all together, if you're doing this on the plane upside down, you don't want to go crazy with the Loctite because you don't want that Loctite to go down here in between the, uh, the actual arm. And this sits inside of a metal or brass tube. So we want to put some lubricant on there first before we get this installed um, to make sure that we're, we're nice and lubricated on there and it spins freely. So that's kind of the process that we're using to get these things installed. We'll take a quick look at how these fit in the actual surfaces. I was talking about that a little bit earlier, but great time in the video to say thank you to you guys that have donated to the shop build at the lighter side of RC. Your names are up here on the screen as we're talking. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate the donations, whether they're big or small. Uh, thank you for those donations. If you are interested in donating to the shop build, uh, all the links are listed down below. So uh, either PayPal, GoFundMe, um, there's one more. I can't remember what it is. So anyways, guys, thank you again for donating to the shop build. All right, so I did check the rod inside both surfaces and they are a snug fit. So I think all that play we were seeing was just in this area right here uh, because we didn't have that all cinched down. So everything looks like it's nice and tight in there. I mean, these things are, are tight to get in and out on both surfaces, so we should be good to go. So you can see how much room we do not have in there to work. But uh, next thing we'll do is we will install the servos in their position and I'll show you guys what that looks like after we're done. All right guys, I think I got a good angle here. I thought if I uh, got everything set up properly, I'd be able to show you this step. So um, here, I don't wanna move the camera cause it's in a good position. So we've got the servo screwed in. Uh, we have used the rubbers. The reason we actually use the rubbers and the little brass grommets is we actually needed to bring this servo that direction more because the skin, top skin of the, of the plane is right there and uh, the servo wouldn't sit all the way down in the pocket. So if you're using different brands of servos that are also deeper than the JR ones, you may run into some issues here as well. But uh, so anyways, putting the rubbers on solved that problem. I still use the washers just for better contact and everything. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here, uh, this is a bit of a tip time, is don't, when you're, when you're screwing the servo in, don't drop CA into the hole where the, the, the screw goes into. Um, it's gonna get stuck to the rubber and you're gonna destroy the servo rubbers when you take or try to take the servo out. So what I like to do is either remove the servo and put some CA on the actual holes once you've got it screwed in or put a, a drop or two of CA onto the screw, put the screw in and then screw the screw in. So um, anyways, little, little tip time for you. And uh, so now I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant on the shaft, just some light machine oil. Okay, so I've done that off camera, and now what I'm gonna do is from the top side of the plane, or the underside on the stand here, is I'm just gonna put that shaft in there, rotate it around to get the lubricant everywhere. And this is where we may lose a little bit of visibility, but basically, Sorry, this is not, uh, not the easiest place to work. So I got that started with the camera not in the way it's usually a much easier process. So anyways, okay, so here we go. The shaft has been installed and that is what we're looking for. So now we can just check that before we do anything down. So it moves nicely. And it feels good. So, happy with that. All right guys, so now what we do is, easiest thing is just to turn that 
so it points towards kind of the middle part of the aircraft and then you can pull the set screw out now i'm using a ball end here but you could conceivably use a regular uh, allen key because you have good access at that angle and then what we do is we take some loctite just blue loctite squeeze a bit in there so now that hole is full. We also put Loctite on the set screw. And now we'll screw it in. And when you do this, you'll see the Loctite kind of come squishing out everywhere, including the top of our screen. There we go. Perfect. So we'll get it a little bit snug on the long end. And then we'll put the L bend in there and get her nice and tight. Now it's only a two millimeter Allen key, so you can't go crazy. But uh, don't forget that receiver uh, is also shaped the same shape as the shaft. So there's really uh, the set screw is just holding it all together. Um, there is some play without the set screw, but uh, that is absolutely awesome. So we got both of our servos installed, that one and the other one, which is out of view. Uh, but that's what it looks like when they are installed. So we've got a decent amount of travel. You can see on the screen there that it does at a certain point hit the wood former, which is fine. Uh, if I had to guess, that's probably 40 degrees of travel on those rudders, uh, which is too much anyways. So uh, the other thing I did yesterday, I don't think I videoed, is these screws right here, uh, those are for the, um, the rudder holders, uh, the shafts that go into the fuselage itself. And there's also another set, my fingers right there. Take a look at the left side of your screen, you can see it. Uh, there's a set back there. So you wanna make sure you tighten those up because you don't have good access afterwards and I guarantee you they, they will be loose. Uh, from the time the plane was built to the time you probably received it, uh, the wood has possibly shrunken a little bit. Okay, so we've got our surfaces su successfully installed. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we are gonna flip this plane back over and we are going to uh, install the actual vertical stabs on this aircraft and check and see how they fit. Man, I love this apron, except it's not an apron, it's a smock. Look how beautiful it's weathering. So, my buddy Mitch made this for me. Um, his stamp is there, MB Leatherworks. Uh, he made this for me about a year ago, I think, and I uh, love this thing, it's awesome. You guys should see it in all the videos, and uh, it's great, my favorite, one of my favorite tools, actually. Anyways, there it is, so. Our uh, rudders or vertical stabs, because we like to keep uh, the lingo, you know, legit, are installed. Now, these are way better than I thought they were going to be. So they are extremely tight. Uh, the fitment of everything is really good. Now, I just uh, put the power box up here, turned the radio on, plugged this, uh, this first side in, and I'll just show you guys what it looks like here. So that is... Um, that's what we got. So hardly giving it any stick as well. Okay, so we got plenty of travel there. Uh, when I was showing you that those, those arms can turn a bunch and hit the former work, uh, you'll never get there. So anyways, that uh, worked out good. Uh, I plugged this one in already and that's all good as well too. I just, uh, there's too much distance here to plug them both in at the same time. So anyways, guys, that is the fitment of the vertical stabs. All right, all right, you sucked me in. So here, they're both plugged in. So there we go. So now you've seen them both. That's just me using the stick. Fast servos, eh? All right guys, and that is the vertical slit stab slash rudder episode. 
Now I have a feeling this one's gonna be a little bit shorter than like the, the elevator episode, which is okay. Um, I wanted to, as I've mentioned already, I wanted to break these build videos of this F-18 up into sections. So in the future when people are building uh, aircraft, the F-18 aircraft, uh, it's kind of like a, an online instruction manual is the thought behind it. So anyways, guys, that portion is now complete. Now we did, uh, there is some wiring coming through here for the lights. So we will talk about that in the next episode. Uh, next episode, we'll start dealing with all of the back end and work our way forward. So um, we're gonna deal with all the servo wiring, start moving forward with everything, mounting the pipes, mounting the exhaust cones, uh, getting that stuff set up. So I have a feeling the next episode is gonna be all about the engine install is going to be the theory, but we'll see what happens. So thanks guys for watching the videos. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to list them down below. Uh, if you have any important, not that you, the comments down below aren't important, but if you have anything you really want me to see, because I don't see all the comments, because uh, sometimes YouTube's funny that way. So uh, if there's really something you want to ask me, whether it's about a build or anything else, reach me by email, thelightersideofrc at gmail.com. That's the best way to contact me. I check my junk mailbox quite often as well too because nowadays so much stuff goes there. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button down below and we'll see you in the next video.